Hey, what's up everybody? My name is TrophyNet and welcome back to Bioshock in our Let's Replay series. We're uh, right in front of the office of Andrew Ryan, not uh, right in front of heat loss monitoring anymore. And that's because I kind of missed another room again. So this room here on the side and there's a bit more information here as well. And another tonic over there. So let's listen to this first. A man of a parasite. The difference between a man and a parasite? A man builds, a parasite asks, where is my share? A man creates, a parasite says, what will the neighbors think? A man invents, a parasite says, watch out or you might tread on the toes of God. So there we go. We know Andrew Ryan calls a lot of people parasites because they, uh, they profit from other people's hard work. That's even in his speech at the very beginning of the game when we uh, go to Rapture in the Bathosphere. And, uh, well, yeah, that's kind of the reason why he built the city. There's a safe underneath here as well, I think. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna buy out the safe. And let's see what's inside. More dollars, napalm, and proximity mines, of which all of which uh, we have enough of. So, Frozen Field 2. Don't let yourself be frozen out. Get Frozen Field 2 today. You take much less damage from cold and can freeze enemies when you hit them with the wrench. Right now, not really useful. So, I'm gonna keep that in the bank for now. So, let's head back to the core and uh, place our bomb. So, geothermal control, let's go inside because we haven't been here uh, yet. So, let's see. Looks like the ocean's got an itch to retake this corner of Rapture. This happened right after the start of the war. Read about it in the papers. Head on in. I'll see what I can dig up to help. Okay, so there's two turrets. I'm going to try and go to the other side and take out that turret first. I'm no engineer, but if I read these plans right, there we go. you can channel that magma flow using the redirect valve. It'll boil off that water right quick, and you'll be able to reach the core. But Ryan's sure to take notice. Might want to set up a perimeter just to be certain. So, as a... Uh Atlas already suggests we should uh, create some sort of perimeter, defensive perimeter. We need to go down there somewhere, but we need to get rid of the water. That's what he was talking about. So overheating everything should allow us to get down so the water evaporates. I'm going to take a few explosive barrels, because there are a few nearby, I think, because there's lots of explosives here. And we'll uh, set up a bit of a defense, defensive perimeter. So I took a gas bottle with two proximity mines over there and I put one over here as well, next to both entrances, which should give us a bit of an edge together with the two turrets that are over here. So let's, uh, well, let's just simply do this, right? So let's take those uh, proximity mines over here. And magma release valve, turn to hold, hold to turn. There we go, there goes one. There goes another one. I don't think I'm really afraid of you. I'm just gonna stand here. They kind of miss everything as well, so... And heal when it's needed. There we go. There goes the little magma flow. And they all die immediately, so with proper defenses this shouldn't take long, so I didn't need to uh, hold off from the uh, turning that thing around. So there we go, thank you very much. Yeah, they're all dead. So now, we can uh, reach the elevator to go down, there we go, and push the little button. So now we can access the core and try to uh, place our bomb right next to it so it uh, overloads and lets us open the lock on the Andrew Ryan office. Let's see, let's see. Okay. So far away from your family, from your friends, from everything you ever loved. There we have another flashback. But for some reason, you like it here. You feel something you can't quite put your finger on. Think about it for a second. And maybe the word will come to you. Nostalgia. So you're, uh, you might already suspect that we're getting closer to uh, knowing why we are really here. And Andrew Ryan again 
um, well, suggests that we are actually from Rapture itself, because he talks about the feeling that we have is nostalgia. So we kind of know the place more than we like to realize. So shorten alarms too. Are frequent security alarms driving you deaf? Reduce the pain with new improved shorten alarms too. I'm going to use that because we don't really need it all that often. There we go. They have faster score. So this is what we could see all along. We can see the catwalks going all around because that was where we were before. But now we're in the center of the room right next to the core. So let's uh, use the lift control. What did Atlas offer you? A piece of my plundered city? Mark my words, your only reward will be a knife in the back. So again, suggesting that we will be betrayed by Atlas in the end, according to Andrew Ryan himself, but of course that could be the ramblings of a madman. So let's place the bomb on this nice little, little place here where we, there's actually enough place for this giant bomb. Let's do that. Where was that in our pocket? And now the EMP goes off. This is of course not a real bomb. But I've never seen an EMP so be so electrifying. So now the core is overloaded and we can head on back to the office. So there we go. I think the alarm goes off for us. So uh I'm gonna try and move a bit further. That little sister is still here for some reason. If I do get across... Okay. So he was uh, going after Atlas himself right there in that speech. Because he, of course, he's really afraid of what we can do right now. Because we can. Okay, Jesus Christ. Three more seconds, three more seconds, three more seconds. Stop firing. Yeah, thank you. So we now can open the door. I think there's another splice here. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, thank you. What is that noise? I think there was a splicer that we just passed. But never actually killed. Hello. Yeah, thank you. We're pretty much invincible with that uh, that vampire, that bloodlust tonic that gives us health and eve while we strike people with the wrench. But now, the moment supreme. Let's turn this baby off. And it overloads the lock. And there it goes, completely shattered. In the end, all that matters to me is me. And all that matters to you is you. It's the nature of So there we go. It l sounds like Andrew Ryan has uh, taken comfort in his fate. Because now the road should be clear for us to kill the man. So here we go. Rapture Central Control. And we enter like a thief in the night. Well, not really in the night, because we made a lot of noise prior to this. By trying to get his door open. Look at this. Even in the book of lies, sometimes you find truth. There is indeed a season for all things. And now that I see you flesh to flesh and blood to blood, I know I cannot raise my hand against you, but know this, you are my greatest disappointment. Does your master hear me? Atlas, you can kill me, but you will never have my city. My strength is not in steel and fire. That is what the parasites will never understand. A season for all things. A time to live and a time to die. A time to build and a time to destroy! And Andrew Ryan 
just started the uh, countdown on the self-destruct of Rapture itself. Flesh to flesh, blood to blood, come now, my child. So there we go, Andrew Ryan set off the uh, self-destruct of Rapture itself, dooming the city to complete and utter annihilation. So now there's only one thing to do, get into his office and kill the man. But first, we're gonna just take a quick look around, because there's no... I don't think there's any rush, I don't think the world will uh, will completely be gone if we don't do anything here. But uh, just in case, I think we also already uh, picked up an audio diary, so let's listen to that. Initial deployment, Vita Chamber. Client Orion Industries, a stage one, need to complete. Sinclair and Alexander try to explain the science to me, but Suchan touched not believe them. They keep saying plasmid reconstruction this and quantum entanglement and that, and they prove dead people come back to life. Bullshit! Of course, Ryan will only allow it to be tuned to his genetic frequencies for the testing. So right now we have a lot more information. By the way, Sinclair and Alexander, two uh, other scientists we haven't heard of before, aside from the Sinclair Spirits shop we found, but both men of science that we're gonna come across later on. But Su Chong, the guy, we know Su Chong as the scientist that created most of the plasmids, just uh, also revealed that he created the Vita Chamber, this thing. The thing that keeps bringing us back to life. And he mentions that Andrew Ryan ordered him to only tune it to his genetic makeup. We've heard that before. The bathospheres are also linked to Andrew Ryan's genetic sequence. But that still begs the question, of course, as to why we can actually access it. And well, now that we have all the, the puzzle pieces, I'm gonna reveal it, of course. You might as well take, uh, have, uh, well, come up to that yourself. We are actually Andrew Ryan's son. The daughter, uh, the daughter, the son of uh, Jasmine Jolene and Andrew Ryan, the egg that was stolen from uh, Jasmine Jolene, well, sold by her, and uh, given to Tannenbaum and Fontaine. So we are the child of Andrew Ryan. He mentioned it in himself, actually, in not so many words, flesh to flesh, blood to blood, I cannot raise my hands against you. Because, of course, we're his son and his greatest disappointment, as he put it. But more on that in a second, because now we're gonna, well, perform some uh, patricide. We're gonna try and kill our father. So let's go in here. There seems to be a tiny air duct over here able to uh, bring us to his office. And let's drop down. Would you kindly... Look at that. This is what ties everything together. There's two audio diaries here as well, so let's listen to the first one, Mind Control Test. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is probably the most important audio diary in the entire game. But before I explain any further, let's uh, listen to this one as well. Baby status. Advanced deployment, lot 111, Dr. Su Chong, client Fontaine Futuristics. Baby is now a year old, weighs 58 pounds, and possesses gross musculature of a fit 19 year old. The results are disappointing, but within expected tolerances. So, Su Chong was also experimenting on a baby. A baby that after one year weighed 58 points and had the musculature of a 19 year old. So, this actually explains why we would be the son of Jasmine Jolene over here and Andrew Ryan. This is us. This is a picture of us. Uh, a picture we've also been uh, seeing part of in the flashbacks we've been having. Um, 
we are genetically modified to age at a rapid pace. So we're actually only a few years old, explaining why we actually could get here. And there's a, there are more pictures of uh, us when we were uh, entering uh, Rapture at the first time, because you can see the uh, New Year's Eve stuff here. And there's a security camera footage of us. Now, there's also a picture of a house, and we've seen this picture quite a bit in the flashbacks. Same as with this picture. Because I think this picture is meant to, uh, well, give us a bit of memory. A bit of memory that isn't actually real. So would you kindly... Uh, it's also linked to Fontaine, Suchong and Tannenbaum. Of course, the tree that raised the baby and tried to genetically modify it after we uh, were kidnapped. Well, not really kidnapped, sold by our mother, Jasmine Jolene. But with that revelation done, let's head into Andrew Ryan's office. Daddy, we're home. There we the go. The assassin has overcome my final defense. And now he's come to murder me. In the end, what separates a man from a slave? Money? Power? No. A man chooses. A slave obeys. You think you have memories. A farm. A family. An airplane. A crash. And then this place. Was there really a family? Did that airplane crash? Or was it hijacked? Forced down. Forced down by something less than a man. Something bred to sleepwalk through life until they are activated by a simple phrase spoken by their kindly master. Was a man sent to kill? Or a slave? A man chooses. A slave obeys. Come in. Thank you, Dad. So... This actually reveals a lot more of how we actually ended up here. The flashbacks you saw were uh, new. There were two new pictures. One of uh, us next to Suchong and Tannenbaum as a baby. A genetically modified baby. And the other one was actually a picture from inside the plane. The gift that we had on our lap at the beginning of the game. That said not to open until a certain point And was directed at us. Contained a gun. A pistol. And we were actually the one that forced the plane down. And uh, Andrew Ryan mentioned it as much, but we were meant to sleepwalk through life until activated by a simple phrase. Here we go. Stop, would you kindly? Would you kindly? Powerful phrase. Familiar phrase. Would you kindly? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly find that? Would you kindly get this? Would you kindly head to Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch? And there we have it. Sit. Would you kindly? Stand. Would you kindly? Run. Stop. Turn. A man chooses. A slave obeys. Kill! There we go. I am not in control right now. Just in case you were wondering. A man chooses! Whack. Goodbye, Andrew Ryan. Hurry now! Grab Ryan's genetic key! Now would you kindly put it in that goddamn machine? 
Now would you kindly put it in that goddamn machine? So there we have it, because Atlas has been, well, leading us along the entire time while we had no choice. Because would you kindly is the phrase that is used from the very beginning of the game, if you would go back, to uh, give us orders. And since, uh, well, since Atlas ordered us to kill Ryan, we did. Actually, it's, I always found this a bit strange. We, um, and Ryan shows that he can control us as well. He lets us run through the hallway, stop and turn. And then the last thing he says to us while uttering those commands is kill. I'm not really sure if he wanted to say kill someone, but kill is of course a command that we followed immediately afterwards. Uh, so kind of committing suicide by us. Uh, there's a lot that hinted to, to this conclusion uh, throughout the game, but uh, first we need, we have his genetic key right now. We need to put it into a machine at the end of this office. And uh, the machine is right there. And the machine is the the pheromone machine that caused the splices to uh, obey Andrew Ryan and not anybody else. So if you put that in, that's not gonna be good, of course, because that's gonna put the splices in the command of, uh, well, Atlas. So let's play the director's commentary. Because that's, of course, gonna be over about the uh, amazing twist in the story right here, because this is one of my favorite moments in gaming. Uh, the twist that we were, well, one twist, is that we were Andrew Ryan's son. Uh, the other twist that, well, we have been genetically modified and sent to Rapture, well, sent back to Rapture, to kill our own father. And then, of course, our next revelation, which you might already guess, will, be hap will, ha will happen right now. Self-destruct override is, it, is what it's called right now, but it's gonna do something else as well. Put it in, Jack. Jack Ryan. Nice work, by all. And Atlas's voice changed. Atlas has been Frank Fontaine all along. I gotta say, I had a lot of business partners in my life, but you, of course, the fact that you were genetically conditioned to bark like a cocker spaniel when I said, would you kindly, might have had something to do with it, but still. Now, as soon as that machine finishes processing the genetic key you just fished off, Ryan. I'm gonna run Rapture, tits to toes. You've been a pal, but you know what they say? Never mix business with friendship. Thanks for everything, kid. Don't forget to say hi to Ryan for me. So there we go, Frank Fontaine has been the guy that led us all along, has been Atlas from the start. And now, there's a little sister trying to help us out. I'm gonna try and not take that much damage in this sequence. We could try and shoot at everything there is, but it's uh, mainly the meaning that we need to follow the little sisters into the vent, because there are more than one little sisters. Oh, and we go down. There we go. And now we're in Tenenbaum's Welcome safe back. house. Welcome to the city where you were born. You are angry at Fontaine, yes? Now you know the truth. You are his tool. Brought back to Rapture to save him. 
Not only his stool, Tenenbaum. So that dialogue would be a bit different if we uh, killed all the little sisters. There we go, we have our next objective, save yourself from Fontaine. So Tannenbaum takes care of all these little sisters that we save, and the ones she saved on her own as well. But now that we had all these revelations, it might be interesting to go over the timeline a bit. So we're gonna start off with, uh, well, the start of Rapture. Uh, Andrew Ryan started Rapture in an attempt to get away from the scrutiny of governments, religion and all that. Uh, and he succeeded at first. He built an entire city with compartments uh, dedicated to every facet of life, every facet of uh, human ingenuity. But one of the people that was invited alongside everybody else was Frank Fontaine, a uh, ruthless businessman who set his eyes on the city as well. Of course, Andrew Ryan didn't like that. But uh, Frank Fontaine started to build a few businesses that he started to monopolize, such as the tech uh, firm called Fontaine Futuristic, the one you uh, saw on top of the, the machine a few minutes ago. Uh, and of course the fisheries and a lot more companies aside from that. Um, Fontaine wasn't a really nice fellow, he had a lot of his bandits doing his dirty work, trying to control more and more of the city, and a civil war started when, uh, he, when Andrew Ryan had enough. Uh, Fontaine is also the one that funded Tenenbaum's research into the Little Sisters and Adam, to start off with, with Adam of course. Adam started everything, they started to find that genetic modifications was, well, possible with uh, Adam. And the Little Sister research was something that Fontaine funded. And of course also provided the girls for it, which we'll see in a minute how that actually went along. So Fontaine ruled the city pretty much because he had all the Adam. Adam was used to genetically modify everyone, but was also uh, very, very addicting. So uh, the splicers, as they were called after that, after they started splicing their genes, was, uh, were addicted to Adam and therefore their allegiances lied with Fontaine himself. It escalated in a fight where Fontaine was apparently killed, but of course we now know that that didn't happen. Fontaine went underground, adopted the alias Atlas, and uh, led another civil war against Ryan. The band of uh, bandits and, uh, well, gangsters that Fontaine had at his d disposal attacked um, the Kashmir restaurant that we went through at the beginning of the game at New Year's Eve of 1959, well 1958 at that point, um, and attacked Diane McClintock, the wife of Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan, after that, while she was hurt, went to uh, Eve's garden, as we've seen, visited Jasmine Jolene on a regular basis and got her pregnant. This was all part of Fontaine's plan, kind of. Uh, Tannenbaum was after that sent to Jasmine Jolene to procure her fertilized egg, which uh, of course turned out to be us eventually. They uh, trained the baby, they genetically modified it so it grew faster, more stronger as well, already implanted a few uh, plasmids. That's, that's also the reason why we saw those uh, genetic memories from other people, since we already had Adam from the very start in our systems and also the reason why we could easily just uh, get Electrobolt at the start of the game. Su Chung, the doctor that created the plasmids, also had a hand in training us, Jack, Ryan, because um, he genetically modified us to react to certain phrases, such as, of course, the infamous Would You Kindly, which caused us to do everything that uh, that person continued to order us to do afterwards. Uh, so with all that done, they send us topside, um, send us on a plane, and after that we hijacked the plane, crashed back down on uh, the lighthouse, and started our journey as you know it. So throughout the game there's a lot of hints uh, pointing to the fact that we are Andrew Ryan's son, starting with the very first one I think in Neptune's Bounty, 
the audio diary that speaks of the fact that the bathospheres are linked to Andrew Ryan's genetic structure. Uh, he also mentions at that time that it could be nephews, nieces, but also, of course, his son. Uh, interesting enough. So that was one of the first ones that indicated that we were the son. The first time we also could have known that we already went through Rapture before oh, is, of course, the fact that we saw those oh, genetic daddy. memories. Hello, little sister. She's going to lead us back outside. Um, I'll probably divulge more uh, about the story once I... Well, I'm not remembering everything right now, but I think that's... Well, that takes care of most of it. Because it's actually a really, really cool plot twist. The fact that we are Andrew Ryan's son. The fact that we've been duped by Atlas into following his every order. Well, Atlas, aka Frank Fontaine. And of course that Atlas is in fact Fontaine and is not yet dead. So this is very interesting as well. So there's a closed door here. But there's a little door that allows the little sister to go, st to go through. And she can open it from the other side. There we go. Thank you. So, let's go upstairs and we get our weapons back. And we are at Olympus Heights, mainly the sewers. And another dead cat. I don't know what Bioshock has with dead cats. Well, Rapture has with dead cats. But hey, what is Atlas is watching? So now uh, we come back to a Rapture. Now you've got hooked up with That's under control of Frank Fontaine. She's a regular mother goose. All right, fun's fun, kid. But now, go get stepped on by a big daddy, would you kindly? So he tries this because he doesn't know that Tannenbaum removed some of the genetic modifications. Huh? I says, would you kindly go get stepped on by a big daddy? But that of course doesn't work anymore, Fontaine. Ah, seems like Mother Goose has been playing around in your egg salad. If you won't dance to that tune, I got others. Code Yellow. And there we go. It's not over yet. I just told your brain to tell your heart to stop beating. Not right off the bat, mind you. The heart's a stubborn muscle. But it ain't that stubborn. So now, because of the genetic modifications, Code Yellow means that our heart will stop pumping eventually. Indeed we can, Tenenbaum. So let's take up this gate crank, because we're going to be able to use that later on. And of course now the entire city is under the control of Frank Fontaine, no longer to Andrew Ryan, because we kind of smashed his brains in. So let's repair this thingy and hold to uh, open the sewer gate. Um, so now our next objective is to f find the apartment building where uh, Su Chong has his apartment and try to find a cure for whatever is ailing us because uh, we're gonna be starting to see effects of Code Yellow. So there we go. Olympus Heights. So there are a few splices over here. I think I'm gonna go with the grenade launcher and just dump one over there. Or is that only one splicer? That's actually only one splicer. So let's go with the crossbow and let's take these guys out really quickly. And there we go. So that's why I like the, the crossbow sometimes, because it's really handy to kill splices outright that don't know where you are. So, Su Chong's apartment is our next objective. There seems to be two dead guys over here. But before we're going to go to the apartment building, we're going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, and it has been one hell of an episode, probably my favorite one in the game, uh, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And if you haven't already, don't forget to give it a thought to subscribe to my channel, because I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give me. Because you guys are the reason why I keep doing these videos. So thanks again enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video or series. Goodbye!